Welcome to FIU Football Weekly. Panthers coming off a 31-14 win over the Marshall Thundering Herd and now face Old Dominion in what could be a possible championship berth for Old Dominion, depending on what happens Saturday. And Coach, we'll get to the Monarchs in a second. First, uh, the Marshall win, 31-14. You guys got back to running the ball and running the ball effectively. Yeah, we uh, did some good things. The open week helped us. We got a little healed up. Uh, guys played, had a little more fresh legs, but uh, offensive line, tight end, receivers all blocked well, and we put the ball in the guys' hands, and they ran with it well. You guys had 259 yards on the ground. What did you see in that Marshall defense that, that gave you the chance to run the ball like they did? Well, you know, we, we felt like we could block them up front uh, all week. We knew that they did some things coverage-wise. Uh, and in, in order to establish what we were doing uh, in the passing game, we felt like with the two young quarterbacks that we had to run the ball. So we worked it like crazy. And the offensive line blocked well and made the right adjustments. And the running backs ran well. And they made some guys miss also. And you guys started the game opposite of what you would think with a young quarterback. You know, three straight passes, Maurice Alexander, the big one to Stanley Thomas, and then got the running game going after that. Yeah, they, play a co they played a coverage that was definitely to stop the run. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt like we needed to loosen their safeties up. Uh, and when we hit them on the post to start the game with, they, they got out of their true run-stopping uh, coverage secondary. So. Uh, our guys, you know, Murray's dropped back and the protection was good. And Stanley, Randy laid it out there for him, made a big play. You got uh, another tandem 100-yard rushers, 121 yards for Anthony Jones, 119 for Alex Gardner, including the FIU record. Uh, just the fourth time in program history that's happened, and two of those times have been this year, previous game against UTEP. Uh, about Alex and the record, uh, I, I'm sure you guys probably knew what he was missing in late in the fourth quarter when you brought him back in. You know what? I didn't know until didn't, they announced okay. it. Uh, didn't have a, didn't have any idea. Uh, we, uh, you know, Coach Harris made sure the guys are fresh, and we brought him back in not to get the record, but we thought that uh, Anthony had had a couple of shots, and we, we wanted to still hold on to the ball, so we just wanted to freshen him up and put Alex back in. You had both of the redshirt freshmen playing quarterback. Of course, Alex Magoo didn't play; he was out. Um, your assessment on Maurice Alexander and Christian Alexander? They both, you know, in, in order to, to get this thing going, you know, we felt like uh, we had to make sure that both quarterbacks understood and knew it. And we worked them during our open week and we worked them last week. And both those two proved that they'll be able to play and be really good players here one day. And, uh, but both of them did a great job of uh, taking, care, taking charge of the offense, calling the plays the right way, putting us in the right checks, and uh, proud of both those two young men. Defense played well as, as well. They uh, allowed 379 total yards and just 78 yards rushing to the herd. Uh, your thoughts on the defense's play? Well, when, when you can make them one-dimensional, and uh, that means stopping them from running the ball, which we worked on all week. We felt like they were going to come in and try to establish the run. Uh, but when you can put them in a situation, then offensively it helps out. We're ahead. So when you get up by a score or two, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to, to call your defenses and allow you to – continue to stop the run and blitz and pressure the quarterback, which will stop the run also. Next up, the Old Dominion Monarchs, 6-1. and one. They're tied with Western Kentucky for the lead in the East Division of Conference USA. And, Coach, uh, if they win and Western slips up at Marshall, their Old Dominion's playing for the championship of the conference. A far cry from where they were last year. They came in here last year. FIU took care of them 41-12. to 12. What have you seen on film that makes them different from last year's team? Well, the quarterback that started had his first start against us last year. That's an athletic kid that can throw the football. And uh, they've got it narrowed down to where he commands the offense. He runs it. Uh, he can help the offensive line get out of trouble. Uh, and at the same time, he can throw the ball. And they, they got a good run game and a pass game. So they've been able to put up points. Uh, we've got our work cut out for us. We'll have a good plan. Yeah, they got a couple of good skill guys, and Ray Lowry, their, their running back, not a, the easiest guy to bring down, and Zach Pascal catching the ball as well. Yeah, two talented guys, and uh, they've been very explosive. They've, they've scored a lot of points, uh, which has made their defense even play better. So we've got our work cut out for us. We've got to, number one, get pressure on the quarterback, uh, but at the same time, don't let him scramble around, because if he scrambles around, he can do some things. And he's got two weapons, you know, we've got a receiver and a running back that both can get it done, too. So. We've got to know where those three guys are at all times and play good sound defense. Does David Washington, the Old Dominion quarterback, does he remind you a little bit of the Charlotte quarterback Hassan Klug? His first start came against FIU when he was re, uh, when they made the change the week before when they played Florida, Florida Atlantic. 
And ironically enough, Old Dominion just comes off playing for Atlantic. Yeah, they, uh, you know, the, the, their quarterback is, he's got a very strong arm. Uh, he's, he's got some range, some length to him, uh, very quick twitch. So uh, if, if a defensive lineman is free, he can step and get around him. And, uh, but uh, very talented young man, but he's got some receivers to throw the ball to also. Old Dominion has the number two scoring defense in Conference USA. That's going to be a challenge for you guys. Uh, what have you seen defensively from the Monarchs? Boy, they do some good things. Uh, they're very disruptive up front on their defensive line. They do some things in the secondary where they bring safeties down inside, outside to help stop the run. So uh, they understand what they're doing scheme-wise, and they do a great job at it. That's Coach Ron Cooper. We'll step aside for a moment, come back with Alex Gardner, the FIU new all-time rushing champ. Sportsmanship is an important tradition for Conference USA members. It means being a role model for the next generation. Giving it everything you got. But always respecting your competition. Supporting your teammates, no matter what the situation is. And representing your school and team with grace and dignity. In the classroom, on the field, in the community, and wherever life takes you. Show your CUSA pride all day through good sportsmanship. Welcome back to FIU Football Weekly. Panthers coming off a 31-14 win over the Marshall Thundering Herd. And our guest this week, Alex Gardner, the new FIU rushing champ of all time. And you're going to have a chance to add to it yes, next sir. year because he's just a junior. We'll get to that in a second. First, the Marshall game, you guys. Beat Marshall for the first time in program history. That's a storied program, the Thundering Herd. Uh, your thoughts on that game? Uh, that was very big. Um, offense, we played very well. Defense played, had a, a great game against those guys. And um, we just wanted to impose our will and go out there and dominate and take over the game because we wanted to be that first team in FIU history to beat Marshall. And in the game, uh, you got 119 rushing yards. That puts you for 2,221 career rushing yards, surpassing mm -hmm. Rashad Smith. Mm -hmm. who had 2,195 career rushing yards. And uh, your thoughts on the record? Uh, it's a very big record. I, I set that goal when I was coming in from high school. I wanted to uh, get almost every running back record I could possible here at FIU. And um, it's very big. I'm glad, thankful for the offensive line and the coaches for get, putting me in a position. Now, you say you set that goal. And, you know, as we know from knowing you now for three years, mm -hmm. you don't have too many offers coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. So... How many people actually believe that goal besides yourself? You're not, you're not being a, you know, a big time running back coming out of high school and you're thinking, you know, high goals. Uh, mm -hmm. Just talk a little bit about that. Um, just something like, I just play with a chip on my shoulder knowing that uh, I felt like I, I was, I'm a pretty good football player and that I could have been offered by more schools, but I'm grateful for uh, picking FIU, coming to FIU and being able to be the new leading rusher here. But outside of myself and family members, probably no one else probably thought I could do it. So that's just something that really pushed me. Now Rashad Smith, who was part of the inaugural FIU football team, similar to you, you guys, similar builds, 5'9", 5'8", 180, what'd you say, 188? 188. He was about 185 when he played. Um, you guys spoke in the spring, and what was that conversation like? Uh, we just talked about um, the, the position at running back, and then uh, he let me know that he was the rushing leader, and then I kind of knew that I was like 900 yards away from um, the record, and I let him know that. I'm definitely going to get that. And he was like, most definitely go get that, oh, man. It's been there for too long. Yeah, he's been a supporter. Rashad's been a supporter of FIU football from the beginning, and, and he's not a guy about numbers, and I know that he's happy for you yes, for getting that record. Uh, of course, you can't do this without your offensive line, and oh, yeah. uh, they have really come on as the season has gone along. Talk about the play from the offensive line. Oh, those guys, man, they were amazing. It was it was uh, plays and times during the game where I didn't get, in didn't get touched until, like, five or eight yards down the field. So, man, without those guys, it wouldn't even be possible. Um, those guys, Mike Montero, Kai Abshir, Daquan Wilkie, De uh, Diego, and Doug, those guys played amazing all last night. The, uh, now, looking ahead, uh, coming up this Saturday, finish the season at Old Dominion, mm -hmm. a much different Old Dominion team that we saw last year. FIU dominated 41-12 to 12 here last year. Believe it or not, they have a chance to play for the conference championship if things go right for them this coming Saturday, meaning Old Dominion has to beat FIU, and then the team that they're tied with, Western Kentucky, has to lose at Marshall. Mm -hmm. You have not seen film of Old Dominion, but you've seen some of their games this year. What can you tell us about the uh, yeah, Monarchs? Um, I've seen a little on their offense from the big plays. Uh, they have a good quarterback and uh, like three good running backs out there. 
and some, some big targeted receivers. So they have a pretty good offense. Uh, haven't seen much of their defense yet, but they're a pretty good team, and we're going to go out there and try and spoil that for them. Yeah, you guys will be probably going into a playoff-type atmosphere, mm -hmm. probably a sold-out stadium over there at Foreman Field, and uh, it's almost going to be, you know, I don't want to say it's a bowl game type uh -huh. atmosphere, but, you know, kind of postseason like that. Well, uh, this, earlier this week, you guys got a new head coach in Butch Davis, and he met with you guys. What were your initial thoughts on meeting Coach Davis? Uh, during that meeting, he brought a lot of uh, energy in there and a lot of belief. He felt like he, he showed belief in us and confidence, and it just it gives us something to work even harder for a coach like that, knowing that he has our back and co so much confidence in us and letting us know that he believes that we can do it. So, What did you know about good. Coach Davis from before? Um, honestly, I didn't know much about him, but I did know, know a little about from seeing the, uh, the U documentary. Yeah. So I saw a little, little of that, but outside of that, I didn't know pretty much. Well, if you guys tuned in this season, you'll remember Alex Gardner was with us earlier this year. He's an aspiring broadcast journalism major, and he kind of had a tough time signing <laughs> off on the show the first appearance that he had. I think by our count uh, and executive producer Joe, Little Joe, or is it Big Joe, whatever his name is now, it was 38 takes, wasn't oh, it? Oh, 38, 38, no, I say about four. Four? <laughs> All right, well, in his, his, his eyes it was four, and the official uh, executive producer's eyes it was 38. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give him a chance at redemption. He's going to close the show, and I'm done. Thanks for watching the FIU Football Weekly. We'll see you guys in the spring football. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had it. <laughs> Thanks for watching the FIU Football Weekly. We'll see you guys in spring football. Thanks for watching the FIU Football Weekly this season. I'm Alex Gardner, and we'll see you this. <laughs> Thanks for watching FIU Football Weekly this season. I'm Alex Gardner, and we'll see you this spring season. Close enough. <laughs>